I've got some bad news. Now you probably know better than to lead off a conversation like that, but this lecture is going to cover better ways to tell people you are about to deliver bad news to than to lead with the fact you've got bad news. You will need to deliver bad news. Um, now we'll start with you're an intern, but especially when you own a company or you're managing a team. The more you know about how to do it, both in person and in writing, the more effective and easier it will be. So here are the lecture notes for today and what you'll need to know eventually for the test. This lecture covers direct and indirect strategies for organization, internal and external communication, the main parts of a negative message, why you may or may not want to put bad news in writing, and the spikes method for delivering bad news. There are two big organizational patterns that you'll want to learn, direct and indirect. We'll go through a few ways to remember these. The only way to apply these effectively is to apply what you learned in chapters one through four. You need to know your audience and your purpose. Then you can get to this point of thinking about organization. With direct and indirect, uh, you'll need to understand the key differences. And like I said, that goes back to audience and purpose. With the direct approach, the main idea, such as a recommendation, a conclusion, a request, is going to come first. Then you add your evidence. This works when your audience is neutral or positive about your message. It's used most often in reports and routine business documents. Readers can get the message more quickly and follow the rest of the report easily. You'll sound pretty sure of yourself this way too. With the indirect approach, the evidence goes first. Main idea comes later. This is an inductive argument. Uh, this approach is best if your audience may be displeased about or resist what you have to say. You may also find that leading with a recommendation if you're an intern is going to sound a bit like a word that my YouTube video probably would censor out. You don't want to sound arrogant. You don't want to turn off the audience. And if you come in and say, I recommend XYZ to your boss, you're going to sound like that bad word. So overcome the audience's concerns. Using indirect approach, you can prove your points first. Defer your conclusions and recommendations so you can show how seriously you took everything. However, with indirect, think about document length. Indirect is going to be harder to follow. You need to be really careful about when you use either strategy. In business, most often people combine the two organizational patterns. Let's look at some samples here. So in this table, you're seeing a scenario where a TA replies to an email from a student. So let's imagine you asked for a grade review. In the direct organizational pattern strategy, so there in the blue, uh, or on the left-hand side, you'll see the TA starts off request denied, and then gives reasons and has a pretty pleasant end. But what would your response be as a student? Would you keep reading after that first line where it's denied? Would you feel the TA was being polite and professional? Now look at the column on the right. In the indirect pattern, the TA opens by acknowledging the request then gives a reason for the denial with a reference to the syllabus policy. The bad news is delivered clearly after the reason and then the TA does that same pleasant ending. Now, uh, are you still gonna be disappointed about the grade? Well, yeah, probably, that's not going to change. But overall, the, what typically happens and why this matters is that people, and I'm assuming maybe you too, but not everybody, of course, listening to this, would feel like the TA had at least heard them out. Uh, so that's why it's useful. Here's a corporate example. In this scenario, the writer is explaining changes based on losses. There's going to be people who are losing their jobs. Uh, this is the opening to a larger document. Now this doesn't open in the first line with bad news, but the bad news comes in the opening. So this is the opening section is what we mean by direct, uh, where it has this clear next step. And if you look at the bottom line, they're closing down the service operation. So let's imagine you worked in service and the next 10, 12 pages of the document explained all the reasons. Are you going to keep reading? Uh, no, probably not. Uh, what's your mood? Upset? Emotionally flooded? Um, so this is why this is not super effective right here. Here's a version where it takes the same content but then puts it into indirect approach. So now our opening section has a, a hint of what's to come, but it doesn't deliver the bad news in the opening. Uh, see how the three big questions are there instead of the three big points of the bad news? Are people still going to be upset? Well, sure, 
Will they likely read the le reasons before they get to the bad news? Yeah, now they have to, <laughs> to have to read the reasons. Hopefully also understand some of the research that went into making those choices. Well, you might be thinking, gosh, these service operations people, they're losing their jobs either way. Does all of this work on a direct or indirect matter? It does. Because in this position, you'd be working to retain, retain morale for the employees who did not lose their jobs. In the movie Up in the Air, which is a great one if you haven't seen it, there's a scene with Seth Rogen where he demonstrates the crazy things people do when they lose their jobs. Maybe it's a flip table. Maybe it's tampering with food in the break room. Uh, you want to manage those responses so that you're not causing stress for the employees who stay. That's where you're really focused on the value. Here's another way to remember this. Uh, think of the bad news as the meat of the message in indirect organization. You might have a buffer with a bun. Uh, you might have your reasons, your bad news. Um, and But ultimately, even if you're buffering it, you're still eating a burger. You're just making it easier to eat and a whole lot less messy. Uh, so this is a great way to try and remember indirect. Bad news is still there. Bad news is still the meat of the message. But we're going to make it easier for people to uh, use and to ultimately understand and then make their next steps forward. All right, so next thing, be really careful when putting bad news in writing. There's several reasons. Uh, first, you don't know where it ends up. People forward emails, people screenshot things. I don't have to tell you that, of course. So when you put things in writing, assume the Enron response. Uh, so with Enron, internal emails ended up being court evidence and well, literally put on the front page of a newspaper. Where's your email gonna end up? Second, with bad news in writing, you can't control their reactions. You aren't there. You can't answer questions or ask follow-up questions yourself. Uh, connected to that, you can't adjust your methods. And let's use that to talk about the fourth point. Maybe the service operations lead in the past example is ready to retire and happy. Maybe she just found out she has some health issue and needs insurance. You don't know what that person's position in. And if you're delivering information in writing, you can't make those kinds of adjustments. So you need to really consider about the best place to go with it. Why does this matter? Let me give you four big reasons. Uh, at a higher level, you have a couple things you need to consider. You need to protect the company. You have to protect yourself and your career. You want to protect the employees who remain, and we've already discussed that. And even on a base level, you're protecting company property. What if somebody's irritated and deletes a critical file or forwards all of their emails to another inbox or goes and swipes a client list that you really needed? All of those things are really important to consider. The movie poster here for Up in the Air, I know the second time I'm mentioning this, but this is a really great example um, of going through why bad news delivery matters. They consider delivering bad news in person versus using video conferencing to deliver bad news. Wonderful points there if you have a chance to go and watch it. Um, I would encourage you to do that. It gives the textbook scenarios for how to uh, do layoffs and also the textbook <laughs> ways this thing can go really wrong. All right, so let's then uh, apply that one more time. Imagine you're a supervisor and Chris is late a lot and it's gotten worse lately. Chris being late is annoying, but now his coworkers are getting gripey and complaining and a few have showed up late. This is tanking his performance and more importantly, that of the whole team. Your manager said to you, fix it. Your positive goals here are to get Chris to show up on time and to improve his performance. So you have some choices. You could stop by his cubicle and say, yeah, get to work, <laughs> you're out. <laughs> What's wrong? Well, the team hears you. Uh, they're annoyed. They're worried. Chris is embarrassed. He can't save face in that situation. What if he has some, I don't know, what if he starts crying at his desk? So anyways, not that. Well, you could get him out of the office, invite him to lunch, um, then spring it on him. But now everyone in the office is terrified to eat lunch with you and you just wasted money on Chris who you know might not show up tomorrow anyways. So how about an email? But wait, does, does Chris read his email? His performance down, is down, I, I don't trust it. He might spread that email around or feel like you don't understand what's happening. What if Chris is late because his wife's work schedule changed and Chris is now on daycare drop-off duty and could stay late, but you don't know that. 
Um, so this is the last choice and of course is the right one. You get Chris alone, you listen to the reasons and you follow up in writing. Now of the four, what might be the hardest is that direct conversation where you have to plan for it and then administer it effectively. But that's what we're going to do today uh, with spikes. So before we move on with spikes, which will help you deliver bad news, let's pause and talk about external and internal communication. This is really important. Internal communication is sharing and understanding meaning within the same business or organization. The Chris example is completely internal communication. External communication is sharing and understanding outside of the organization. Often bad news will be internal and external. Let's go back to the example of the service operations closure. Internally, you're communicating about changes to benefits or retirement for those people. Externally, you're communicating to industry partners or investors about improvements to the bottom line so that they're confident your business is going to continue running. It goes back to knowing your audience. Your industry partner does not need to know that Daisy in service operations took an early retirement because she's ready to live the van life on social media. For Daisy, that bad news was good news. Good news. She's searching for vans on Craigslist. That's part of why bad news delivery is so complicated. You can predict how your audience might react, but you never truly know. So now we're going to discuss the spikes protocol for delivering bad news in person. Let's use an example that I'm guessing most of us have experienced or you've heard it um, being delivered to a friend or a family member, and that would be bad news from a doctor. The next few slides are based on how doctors, and this specifically came out of oncology, so cancer, are taught to deliver bad news. In the 1990s, medical schools realized that doctors were doing a really bad job for the most part. <laughs> you can see a classic example on this slide. Some doctors were afraid to deliver bad news. Others delivered bad news like a death super bluntly. Not okay. Uh, researchers looked at how to make that better and they implemented a six step process super supported by the research that we are adapting here in JSOM to delivering bad news in business. So here is the six step process. You can remember this by remembering the word spikes. It's going to help you deliver bad news more quickly and with limited background information. So first, S for setting up the interviewer appointment. P, assessing the recipient perception and your prep work. I, obtaining the person's invitation. K, need to know, so you're giving information there. E for empathy, and S for strategy and summary. First off with the setting. So you know you need to set up the meeting. Uh, let's stick with, you've got to tell Chris, for example, that he has to come in on time. You would wanna pick a room that's private, but you might not invite, um, and, you know, whether or not you invite someone else for a witness or a support would be up to whether or not or how well you know that person you're delivering the bad news to. A conference room allows for a graceful exit, so if you can't, um, you can't do that. If you're standing over somebody's desk, it's not going to be a graceful way for anyone to get in or out of that. You want to think about when you schedule this bad news on a Monday morning, uh, it would sour the whole week versus bad news at the end of the week would be much more effective. Some sample phrases there is um, even asking like, would you like to have your manager here uh, is a wonderful way that you could set that up. Second, perception. You're going to be gathering information, understanding what they think is going to happen and why. So for example, unrealistic expectations. They think they're being fired and you're transferring them. Ease that tension immediately. This helps to correct misunderstandings. They think they're being promoted or recognized when they're being reprimanded is another one. That's really awkward. I'd suggest you memorize that first phrase. So the, do you know why we're meeting today? A lot of times people will just blurt out <laughs> sometimes really interesting things if you do that. Next comes invitation. Now, this is really a courtesy move. Think back to Daisy and her van plans. She may not care at all about the budget at a high level and just want the next step information. You can save her time and your time answer her questions. More importantly, this moment provides employees an opportunity for voice and an increased sense of fairness and justice. The employee may feel like their self-worth has been validated. 
Getting workers involved in this discussion can be achieved by asking open-ended questions. How would you prefer I give you that information about um, implementing this reduction in force? Are, for example, um, are you the kind of person who prefers to know all the details about what's going on? Or how much information would you like me to give you about the budget? Uh, think back to Daisy. Daisy might be like, well, I don't need any budget. And then she can ask her question instead, which is a really nice way to lead into the next part, which is all about knowledge. When delivering bad news, say that someone was texting during a team meeting and needs to be reprimanded, you can't ease up in this section. A recent article explains, quote, business research shows that perceptions of organizational justice, that is being treated fairly amid layoffs, can ease workplace tension, reduce the risk of lawsuits, and improve job performance among workers who were not terminated. You need to check on the impact, provide a clear summary, and then make sure they understand what's just being said. The next one with emotion. Uh, with a medical situation, they know that empathy actually improves medical incomes. You want to identify the emotion and then make an effort to display empathy and share in that feeling. Now wait, let's address one major issue. You may be tempted to say, I know just how you feel. Well, you don't. You are not that person. You need to be prepared for Daisy who's thrilled and Chris who's super irritated. You aren't going to feel just like either one of them. You don't want to adapt to your emotions and start crying or laughing. Uh, but what you do want to do is demonstrate that you are considering an employee's emotions. So for example, with the layoffs or the reduction in force saying, I feel disappointed at our budget changes too, uh, would be a good way to do it. Finally, uh, number six, we're going to talk about strategy and summary, which I think is the pretty straightforward one. You've delivered the bad news, but here's the key thing. Do not just walk out. You have to close the discussion and set up a next step. If you do end up watching that movie up in the air, you'll see a wonderful way to do this where he hands them a packet of information to hold before they leave. So you're giving this employee something to do, which even if it's just handi holding the folder and then walking out the door. This is a good point where if you have the bad news in writing as well, so let's say you have changed somebody's hours and you have that in writing, changed their salary, definitely put that in writing. If you are terminating someone and you think they might come back later and be like, oh no, I quit, have that letter right there so that you can hand it over at this point and then explain what they should do next. For example, are you going to take questions on this? Let's take this on campus. I have two more examples of all of this. Here's an example of how to apply spikes. Let's say you are the treasurer for this new imaginary UTD Swiss art club. So UTD is actually getting the Museum of Swiss Art on campus one day. This painting should be included. I, I like this painting. All right, so here's the setup. At your leadership meeting for your club, John is our vice president, wants to use the university provided funds, because clubs often get money from the university, but he wants to use them to rent a bus. And while there at the Dallas Museum of Art, he thinks he should use the university money for Swiss cheese sandwiches and to buy Swiss art postcards to boost club morale. You know very well the Swiss cheese sandwiches and postcards aren't going to boost morale. And you know students can drive themselves. They did it all in the past. If the club pays for this, it's broke the rest of the year and can't afford the fundraiser of it they need to hold. That's, that's bad. So you have to say something. My challenge here for you is to go ahead and pause this video and then think through the spikes outline for how to tell John, no way, get lost. So go for it and press pause, think through each of the steps, and then I'll summarize. All right, well, I'm hoping you did that. So you might think about setting. Uh, you wanna say that to John in front of the whole big crowd. You wanna say that maybe after a meeting with the president there. You might uh, gain their perception, or of course his perception of what he thinks is happening. Ask for any other follow-up. Will you do the invitation? Create that sense of shared knowledge. Maybe you're just pointing to university policy there on how you can spend club funds. Assess emotion. Uh, I could imagine somebody like John being disappointed if they'd pitched that to other people. So maybe you have a plan for how John can do something else that's also going to boost morale but doesn't involve poor use of funds, and then summarize the big picture thing. So maybe with the summary, you're even thinking towards the following year. So let's complicate this one more time for spikes and with bad news generally with a real world example. 
What I want you to think about here is how do you even know something is bad news? What if it seems good to you? What if it's good to some people, but then to not others? How do you pick the right channel for that news delivery? What about if the public responds in a weird, unexpected way, and then you have to deliver news again? <sighs> so it's a lot. Let's use Target. A few years ago, Target announced they were removing the signage that said, what's a boy toy? What's a girl toy? And people were furious. I do not think Target saw it coming. I mean, they weren't putting Barbie with Roblox. They were just changing a couple of signs. So Target made this external announcement. Uh, it seems pretty straightforward. Again, it's not bad news sounding, right? It's just an announcement of what was happening. But it wasn't straightforward. <laughs> Fox News started running pretty divisive segments. It became national news with people planning to boycott or cancel Target, and this was before cancel culture language. And then people started really posting on Target's Facebook page with their extreme outrage. So Mike here is a comedian, and he saw these comments and decided to create a fake Target page using the actual Target logo and then pretended to be an official customer service rep for Target. Here you can see him interacting with another Target shopper or perhaps our former shopper. Here Mike is apologizing for being nice. You'll notice I did not in Spikes ever suggest apologizing. <laughs> And here's where this is really even a bigger issue. And I don't have a way to like show this on a slide, but they, Mike continued posting for 16 hours. Target was unprepared to monitor its own social media. A corporation like that should have someone watching the major platforms 24 hours a day to catch anything like this. And similar trolling is still happening. I've seen this with Costco even this past month. So what Target ended up doing was posting, you can Google this, a picture of a troll doll the next day. It acknowledged what happened, but it kept it really lighthearted. It did not change its ultimate decision to realign the aisles for toys with how they're presented with their signs. All it did was sort of acknowledge, yes, this was not, did not go well, and then moved on from there. So let's bring all that together. Bad news delivery is going to be part of your job. Understanding the organizational patterns of direct and indirect, understanding internal and external, understanding spikes, and then finally understanding how, well, let's see with the target example, you don't always know what's bad news. Well, that isn't going to make bad news delivery any more fun. Very few people find this to be a fun part of their jobs, but it will make delivering bad news easier to manage and much more effective.